and verse 27 romans chapter 8 and verse 27 and then first corinthians 2 verse 10 to 11 I need us to be on the same a level playing ground tonight um, because I know that many of us come from different uh, I don't mean to be insulted but different religions some of us and even in Christianity we come from different sects with different perspectives about God and I understand that there are many people who do not accept the Holy Spirit as a person they accept him as an influence they accept him as um, um in fact some believe that he's one of the angelic cadres he's not i have proven it to us and then the bible clearly tells us again that the holy spirit is god amen so let's deal with the ministry of the holy spirit i want you to really pay attention because this tonight's teaching will be examining the need the advantage the benefit and the operation of the holy spirit in our lives now that we have agreed that he's a person sent from god we have to examine why is he such a big deal because let me tell you something there are many believers who think discussing about the holy spirit is inaccurate you know you hear them say look it is jesus we want to know he's the one who died for our sins what is all this idea about the holy spirit is jesus we want to know and um, you know they make it look as though the teaching of the holy spirit is some kind of occultic movement and it is important for us to understand his ministry in our lives john chapter 16 for our text tonight let's look at the book of john chapter 16 jesus is teaching the disciples here and um, in the chapter before he began to introduce them to the personality of the holy spirit and then he went further to let them know the things that he would be doing his ministry let's read from verse 7 john chapter 16 from verse 7 we're reading down um to 15 7 to 15 quite a long reading ready nevertheless okay i tell you the truth it is what expedient the word expedient is advantageous to your own advantage for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter notice all the names that he's used because his names are also a representation of his operation and his ministry it's in the character of god to name things according to their usage um house how people do a lot of that they name people based on what they do so you can you don't need to ask what the person is doing they can name him by his occupation or profession we do that a lot in the north this is where uh, this whole idea came from so when he is called the comforter that introduces a dimension of his ministry the comforter will not come to you but if i depart i will send him to you we're reading down to 15 and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin righteousness and judgment verse 9 of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now now that's that's a very interesting we can stop there and spend all the night please go back to verse 12 it says ye cannot bear them now this is very powerful i'm, I'm coming soever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he shall glorify me for he, I want you to know the Bible says he uphold thing he upholds all things by the word of his the Holy Spirit is the mystery that holds creation together you have to realize this he's not just um, one force that was sent to men and so if you are not a man you are not ready but no 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 we see the Holy Spirit's ministry finding expression even in animals donkeys spoke that's a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit rods bordered that's a manifestation of the power of the holy spirit a rod turned to a serpent 
and back again water parted all of these things we see his power the might of the spirit of god demonstrated all through creation so i want us to know that the relevance of the holy spirit cuts across culture cuts across animate and inanimate things the relevance of the holy spirit cuts across civilization whether the 18th 19th 20th 21st century and whatever it is the relevance of the holy spirit cuts across dispensations dispensations when you realize this the holy spirit does not become he no longer becomes an issue of christians please listen the holy spirit is not just on earth for christians the holy spirit is god he is the spirit of god as i'm going to be teaching you the holy spirit has a ministry to creation he has a ministry in our world today cosmos the social system the holy spirit has a ministry to unbelievers the holy spirit has a ministry to believers are we together now so regardless of what category you find yourself you need the person and the ministry of the holy spirit say amen because if we do not understand some of these things we can feel the holy spirit is a nuisance and he's only needed by those who want to heal the sick that's the ideology many people receive so every time we talk about the holy spirit we leave him to pastors and apostles and prophets and all those who want to be part of ministry as we know i'm a businessman i don't need him i'm a politician i don't need him i'm a career person i don't need him that's a fallacy the holy spirit is needed for life and godliness he is the life of god he is the power of god ignoring the holy spirit and any aspect of his ministry will cost you your effectiveness everyone say i need jesus the model of the church the very son of the living god the firstborn among we the begotten jesus was helpless on the earth the holy spirit was required to get mary pregnant he played the fatherly role of mary the holy spirit was required are we together now in in the the growth and the understanding of jesus as he grew in wisdom statue the holy spirit was responsible for his empowerment the holy spirit was responsible for that invincible and flawless life that jesus lived the holy spirit was responsible for supplying the grace for his passion the holy spirit was responsible for his resurrection the holy spirit was responsible for his ascension responsible for the birthing the holy spirit is the mother that birthed the church we can never ignore his ministry and prosper listen to me please whether you are presbyterian whether you are an atheist whether you are a muslim christian buddhist whatever religion whether you are you are a christian catholic pentecostal charismatic orthodox you know whatever it is i want you to know that the holy spirit please come the holy spirit was not sent as a choice for christians no the holy spirit is god's gift to earth god's gift to humanity regardless whether you are a sinner he has a ministry in your life whether you are born again he has a ministry in your life in business in ministry as we call it fivefold whatever it is we have ignored his ministry in fact in fact many believers do not doubt that there is an existence of such a personality called the holy spirit you will seldom find people argue with you about the existence of such a personality however in fact many have even supposedly received him it's one thing to receive the holy spirit but it's another thing for his ministry to be activated in your life that you have received the holy spirit and you are even praying in tongues does not necessarily mean his ministry has been activated in your life are we together help me with this bottle of water watch this give it to me i have received this water is that true 
but this water was designed to accomplish specific things in me quench my thirst help me become healthy now if i keep holding this bottle for a long time i am not in doubt that there is such a possibility i know i'm feeling it i hold this bottle so if you talk about the bottle i say wow yes i hold it i'm a possessor of it but i'm not a benefactor of the advantage the possibilities that this bottle could bring i can die of thirst yet i am holding a bottle of purified water that can quench my thirst so don't be caught up with this self pride and arrogance that i know him after all the name of my church is holy spirit uh, maybe assembly or something and you convince yourself that because you mention his name and talk about him so much it means you know him no thank you the advantage that were designed were designed to take advantage of his person and his ministry not his person alone an awareness of you if this guy is a um what do we call it now let's assume that this guy is a very good driver being aware that he's a good driver is wonderful but that does not profit me if this guy now drives me then i am enjoying his ministry brothers and sisters thank you very much many of us seated here and listening to me following online have not maximized the ministry of the holy spirit we have not even allowed him we have not allowed him and i'll be showing you shortly there are specific things the holy spirit was sent to achieve in our lives i won't talk so much about his ministry to creation my focus especially in this series is on men we have been discussing the issue of men we really want to understand the dynamics of triumph and we're examining the ministry of the holy spirit with respect to men the holy spirit has a twofold assignment please write with respect to his ministry to men he has a twofold assignment the assignment of the holy spirit to men is twofold number one his ministry to unbelievers that's the starting point of his encounter with men his ministry to unbelievers unbelievers those who are yet to encounter christ those who are yet to surrender their hearts to his lordship he has a ministry to them and then number two his ministry to believers or the church the ecclesia the holy spirit has a ministry to the body of christ not just to believers to the body because believers are part of that body so he has a ministry to unbelievers and then he has a ministry to believers the church the bride of christ several things the bible tells us that the holy spirit would do in the life of unbelievers let's look at them very quickly john 15 26 to 27 john 15 26 to 27 the bible says when the comforter is come listen jesus is teaching here whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father what will he do he shall what testify testify like a witness to my reality remember we discussed the last time that the holy spirit makes jesus real there is no amount of oratory there is no amount of audiovisual that is capable of making jesus real to a man no amount of jesus film no amount of um what do we call it uh, visual drawings that can attempt to paint it can just capture emotionally but it it cannot reveal jesus the holy spirit is the one who testifies of jesus are we together now next verse 27 and ye also sh shall bear witness because ye have ye have been with me from the beginning jesus is saying the holy spirit will bear witness to unbelievers and just like him that will be for next week you will also end up being like him to men witnesses are we together the faithful witness is not a man he's the spirit of god he's called the faithful witness unbending 
the faithful witness testifying of him when you see people convicted give us john 6 44 when you see jesus come alive to people brothers and sisters listen the reason why it is not difficult for us to believe in jesus huh, is because we were born in a religious environment and so although we had not surrendered completely to him we were in an environment that seemed to appreciate his reality so it was not very difficult to switch are we together but if you were born a buddhist an atheist a non-christian or your father was involved in all kinds of um extreme witchcraft you will realize that it takes the power of the holy spirit to make jesus real why will you walk up to me and just tell me i am going to die i'm going to perish i should hand over my life to someone called jesus what is so special about him i'm already rich i'm already healthy i already live in a mansion i already live with all kinds of luxurious things why do i need jesus it's very easy in africa for people to receive jesus because our economy has already tilted us to uh, the point where we need a savior so it's very logical the moment you propose jesus and what he can do it makes a lot of sense to a man who is hungry but you see when you go are we together now he says no man can come to me except the father which had sent me draw him and i will raise him up on the last day no man please hear me if you have ever given your life to jesus christ it never happened just by your willpower alone uh -uh. the holy spirit was there it's unfortunate right now we organize crusades without him emotional crusades we share tracts we put jesus film at the end of it people cry you see them crying you think before you make the altar call they should come and lie down while you are making the altar call they are crying and they are still sitting down looking at you that's to tell you that this thing um, is the same thing that would happen to them if they watched an Indian film are we together no man can come to me no man has the power to be so convinced just by the eloquence of men no your words are not articulate enough to cause a man who is 50 years in his mind as an atheist has written all kinds of scientific propositions disproving the existence of God and then you claim to speak to him in 20 minutes and have him bend down on his knees no it takes more than just intelligence it takes the power of the Holy Spirit I am it never ceases to amaze me the sermon of Peter have you read Acts chapter 2 what a boring sermon what a disjointed sermon i've been teaching our school of ministry homiletics for five years i've been teaching them how to preach and i understand certain things that should be contained in a good message to make sense peter's message had only two of that five you're meeting a lot of people and then telling them some history that doesn't make sense wasting their time and then at the end i thought they'll say what a boring man you gathered us here to waste our time the bible says they were caught to the heart that's not the excellency of speech that's the power of god are we together the holy spirit convicts and draws the heart of unbelievers to jesus when you read john 16 from verse 7 it says that when he the spirit of truth is come please give it to us john 16 verse 7 when the spirit of truth is come he says he will reprove the world the world of unbelievers of three things of sin righteousness judgment go to verse um yes thank you verse 8 when he is come he will reprove the world of sin righteousness and judgment listen no man has the power to create conviction in men every man that tries to convict men brings condemnation to men are we together now it is not given to man to bring conviction no you can only partner with him it is the holy spirit who can convict a man brothers and sisters men are arrogant the fallen nature designed men that way when a man kneels down to the lordship of christ especially 
when he's an accomplished man then it was the power of the holy spirit are we together now when i make altar calls i am surprised sometimes i see the people coming out you know that he must have taken god to bring these people out they are even surprised as they are coming out what am i doing here the holy spirit how many pastors how many evangelists do all kinds of theological dissertations and they refuse his ministry they finish preaching and they call and people come out while you are praying the prayer somebody is pinching someone and say the camera is capturing us and they are laughing at the end of it you say amen and then you count the number of people and after 10 years we say we have won 1 million people to christ the convicting power Ben Hinn shared something very powerful about the Holy Spirit that blessed me watch this without the Holy Spirit miracles will not change people <laughs> the nation of Israel saw more miracles than we will see combined in our generation yet yet the Bible called them a stiff necked people when Jesus walked on earth, John 20 tells us many more miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not documented in this book. So there are many more miracles. We only know he walked on water because it was recorded. There were many other miracles Jesus did. But the Bible says when he resurrected, some doubted. How do you doubt a man who is this invincible? He died. Lazarus died he brought Lazarus back to life the son of the widow at name brought her back to life the daughter of the centurion brought her back to life made five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand men aside women and children walked on water had a, a harvest of fish without any kind of assistance yet the people doubted him when Jesus died they all ran away when he resurrected they did not even believe Thomas said no way I will have to see him and put my hand in his hands and his side why the Holy Spirit was not given to them the Holy Spirit it is possible don't forget that Jesus sent the 12 and the 70 all together they went out to go and do evangelism they themselves said even the demons brothers and sisters when a demon bows to you that's like the apex of a demonstration of spiritual power yet they doubted Jesus they doubted the life of God you can go to theology school without the Holy Spirit preach for many years and one day hang yourself and say I don't believe this have you seen people after several years of preaching who just look at this I once saw a book I didn't read it of a man who was once a Christian and then I think he refused to be a Christian and he said it's nonsense he said there are many inconsistencies in the Bible and frankly speaking physically when you look at what he's saying he brought a lot of logical things from a historical perspective from an archaeological perspective from even a logical perspective from a prophetic perspective brought all these things together and just said Christians are wasting their time this is complete nonsense we are being as indoctrinated as whatever produce the book this is somebody who was once in Christ hmm. are we together without the Holy Spirit you cannot truly experience the reality of Jesus you will be claiming he's real to you it is the absence of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that makes people to stand and sing hallelujah and all of a sudden when things go wrong they just go to a harbor list and they say after all it doesn't matter every power belongs to God when you see people talk like that they are not enjoying the ministry of the Holy Spirit you join a charm come to church and receive prophecy and then add another broomstick that they gave you in one coven mix everything and say it's just different ways of manifesting the power of God no sir no sir now I'm talking to Africa some of us here our parents is amazing there are pastors who love God they are not fake 
but the ministry of the holy spirit is not in them the moment especially when people get sick you see people bringing all kinds of alternatives they tell you they're in christ and you look at what they are doing they say no 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 the guy is not exactly a herbalist he's just gifted by who everybody's influenced by a spirit are we together now very very important what is his ministry to unbelievers conviction and recognition of the need for jesus what is his ministry to unbelievers conviction and recognition of the need for jesus that's his assignment to unbelievers he has the exclusive ministry of bringing conviction supernatural conviction like some of you now are being convicted supernaturally it's very supernatural is there, there's no there's no physical logic to it this is something that is entirely supernatural can bring a man to his knees to embrace jesus saul of tarsus was on his way to damascus a man who was so hardened you will imagine when they were killing the Matthias, Stephen, it was, it was Saul that sat down and they kept their clothes at his feet. Yet he later became the greatest, one of the greatest of the apostles. Listen, how we need the truth about Jesus to spread across our families, to spread across territory, the issue of introducing Jesus to people today above him there's no other Jesus is the way how we need everyone around us saved how we need do you know most of the confusion in our society is because men are governed by an ideology that is outside of the Christ look at the way heaven is Total submission to the Lordship of the Christ. Look at the dexterity and the order. Our world, our government, our politicians, our business people have no respect and recognition for Jesus. The issue of, him, of opening up the hearts of men to receive Jesus is not an activity for preachers. No. The Holy Spirit has a ministry. The first and primary way that the earth will be full of the knowledge of the glory of Christ. It's not building of luxurious structures and having multi-millionaires spread across a church. The first thing is the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Number one, first things first. I don't care how rich a church becomes. I don't care how prosperous. I don't care how educated a people become. If Jesus is not institutionalized in an environment there is trouble when ebola broke out something that is a temporary thing governments came together to drive it out because they perceived it to be a threat jesuslessness is a threat is a threat to humanity a life truly without jesus please hear me this is not an initiation into a christian's religion There's nothing as terrible as a life that does not acknowledge Jesus. As we are seated here, there are many of our loved ones who are not saved. Completely not saved. They laugh at you every time you mention, ah, don't bring any Jesus thing, please. I'm not a small child. We did all those things so when we were young. You hear them say, now that we are old, we are facing life intelligently. Jesus has been tagged a nuisance to civilization you mention him and you see the disdain especially on young people you mention jesus is as if you mention unemployment you mention jesus as if you mention barrenness who indoctrinated us who pushed away the ministry of the holy spirit such that we cannot even partner with him to allow men listen the holy spirit is still on earth today carrying out a massive campaign on unbelievers what is he doing convicting them that's why you find out that right now find out what is happening across the world especially the middle east 
mighty manifestations of Jesus people having encounters of Jesus since we are not going to be serious since we are more interested in making money since we are more interested in having building empires and being called apostles and prophets the Holy Spirit himself engineering conversions in whole families without the assistance of a single individual he said if you will not praise me I will raise up stones everybody say conviction say it again conviction say recognition do you know do you know that Saul was not part of those who walked with Jesus Christ yes he was a Pharisee but he was not part of those who walked with Jesus Christ but the moment he encountered Jesus he called him Lord see for those of you who have had visionary encounters let me tell you something in fact any kind of encounter if it is the Holy Spirit that introduces Jesus to you you must acknowledge him as Lord if it's a preacher that introduced Jesus to you without the assistance of the Holy Spirit you may just see him as an intelligent historian one of the many and you will clap for him every religion believes in Jesus but as what as what hallelujah say conviction we need to allow the holy spirit step into our homes and change our loved ones step into our offices and change people step into governments of nations the decadence that is eating up society is as a result of this exclusion thing holy spirit remain in church his first ministry it's not to throw people under the anointing no his first ministry to men is to introduce jesus to them he makes jesus real although never seen him we believe him why the holy spirit the faithful witness the faithful witness have you ever seen him to believe him how can you be this convinced the spirit of god he makes Jesus real without the Holy Spirit an unbeliever can even come out and recite salvation prayer and not be born again hallelujah the saints and the angels bow the redeemed worship you now holy 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 are you Lord? Holy, holy, holy Are you Lord? Powerful song Holy, holy, holy Are you Lord? The saints and the angels bow The redeemed worship you now holy 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 are you lord i'd like us to pray one minute and say holy spirit i give you access to every unbeliever in my life i allow you step into my home step into my office are we praying koinonia holy spirit my village is in need of your touch holy spirit my office is in need of your touch holy spirit my campus is in need of your touch holy spirit my environment nigeria is in need of your touch holy spirit africa is in need of your touch holy spirit my people are in need of your touch bring conviction bring conviction bring conviction bring conviction bring conviction to my father bring conviction to my mother bring conviction to my sisters bring conviction to my brothers are you praying Lord, I'm tired of talking to them every time and they insult me. I've been doing it without you. But Holy Spirit, 
visit them yourself you are the only one who can make jesus real the way my father is no preacher can lead him to christ he needs you by himself the way my unbelieving brother is they need you lift your voice and pray we are talking about the holy spirit here hallelujah listen let me teach you something about intercession for souls when you are praying for souls don't just pray blindly oh god save them no cry for an encounter with them and the spirit of god it's a collision one person must give up if it's the holy spirit no 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 you can't hit the holy spirit and it goes back it's a joke if the holy spirit comes it will swallow up every stubbornness it was here some years ago while i was teaching on the reality of heaven and hell one person who i think he was an ustas or something like that had read arabic was sitting in the overflow outside i don't know how the i'm sure just for curiosity just came to sit down and listen and while i was speaking all of a sudden he said the moment i was speaking it's as if outside just became blood and everywhere just vanished and there he was standing alone with jesus the son of the living god while koinonia was going on that guy broke down gave his life to christ god filled with the holy spirit now that's the holy spirit at work please listen many of us are suffering today because the heads of our home have thrown him out so he can come in he can come into your life but not your home because the doorway the priest of the house has willingly kicked him out many of our fathers don't recognize him many of our mothers don't recognize him you talk about him oh, please don't bring all those church church garbages you need to pray and say holy spirit you are the testifier of jesus you are the testifier of jesus i'll never forget one of the most awesome testimonies that we've had in this ministry one of our ladies uh, long before she left it was a non-christian family everyone then she was the first to get born again and kept growing and building and then gradually i think it was her mom who later got born again supernaturally a non-christian family not just a few people and then gradually i think her younger brother or there about got born again everyone got born again and it was the dad that was left he was angry already persecuting them criticizing them you know you know what i'm talking about withdrawal of benefits etc etc and then one time i would never forget one night we're preparing to go for prayers and this lady comes to me crying and saying the lord has done it god is faithful what happened i don't know what made the father to meander into living faith fire fell on his head do you know the holy spirit has a way of navigating a man who has no business going for a crusade he will just be passing and say what who is this guy shouting and stand there and that's it that's the end of it do you believe what i'm sharing with you his ministry to unbelievers if you know this never never get rid of anyone the holy spirit has not given up on are you hearing some of us have our brothers our sisters our loved ones they smoke around they snuff everything as stubborn as whatever you give them a bible they sell it and use the money to drink all kinds of things when the holy spirit meets them one day you will just see that gentleman who used to dress like a thief holding his bible and saying are we not going for koinonia and you say no no oh it will happen no oh. It will happen in the name of Jesus why are you surprised have you forgotten how you used to be have you forgotten so soon that the Holy Spirit can convict men number two quickly his ministry to believers and I want to dwell here a little and then The Holy Spirit has a very extensive ministry to believers who are believers 
recipients of the life and the power of God, recipients of the grace and the mercy of God, those who have been redeemed, partakers of his divine nature. Now write this down, please. Give us 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. And then Philippians chapter 2 verse 1. 2 Corinthians 13 14, a popular scripture in the body of Christ. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in a believer is primarily carried out through communion, fellowship. Please understand this. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, the principal channel for the Holy Spirit manifesting his ministry. And trust me, I know what I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit's, the chiefest way that he manifests his ministry in a believer is through communion. Please give us Amplified if we can find it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and then he says, and the presence and fellowship, the communion, the sharing together, the participation in, and then King James says, of the Holy Spirit, be with you, amen. So there is a fellowship, say fellowship. There is a communion, say communion. Without the communion of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit cannot find his ministry cannot find expression to a believer what is communion fellowship what is communion oneness are we together now let me teach you something listen um i know you're writing can i use you again thank you there is the dimension of the ministry of the holy spirit in you there is the dimension of the ministry of the holy spirit with you alos paracletos one who is called to walk an extension of the ministry of jesus are we together now both are very important but communion is the key communion intimacy koinonia the word are we together that participation fellowship a recognition of himself in your life and then that allowance creating the atmosphere your assignment in terms of your partnership with the holy spirit as far as communion is concerned is to create the atmosphere create the atmosphere create the atmosphere for communion to be possible create the atmosphere for fellowship communion does not happen anywhere and anyhow there is an atmosphere there is a state of being there is a state of surrender that can cause communion to be a possibility in the life of a person. Thank you. Hallelujah. Many of us fail to create that atmosphere. Every other thing that I'm going to be listing here is communion dependent, is fellowship dependent. If you do not have what the Bible calls the fellowship of the Spirit, it is impossible to access these other dimensions of his ministry fellowship Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 it says if there be therefore any consolation in Christ if any comfort of love then it says if any fellowship there is such a thing as the fellowship of the Spirit fellowship of the Spirit fellowship of the spirit that introduces you to a lot of other things when i sat down i watched ejimi and his dear daughter he was busy talking with her that's fellowship communion koinonia and then after a while of conversation she left with his phone i think he put a game for her and she was happily going and i said that's the fringe benefit of communion it started with her coming to him they were discussing i did not know and then as a result she had access many of us want to access the riches of Christ the blessings of Christ but we ignore the place of communion the platform upon which the ministry of the Holy Spirit is manifested in the life of a believer is not prayer is not fasting is communion prayer is a subset of fellowship 
Are we together now? Hmm. Fellowship. So what is the first ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer? Let's hurry up. Number one. Write it down please. The first assignment of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is activation of his spiritual senses. Activation of his spiritual senses. A believer is one who has already received the life of God. When the Holy Spirit comes into the life of a believer, his first assignment is activation of your spiritual senses. The Bible calls it being alive to Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Very popular scripture. The Bible says, read, please, everyone is projected. One to read. But the natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Let me explain to you what that means. The natural man, not just a carnal man, the natural man one who is alienated from anything christ among other things responds to his environment only based on his sensory perception are we together so his decisions are made from the impulses around him the limit of his interaction is just a three-dimensional realm the natural man the bible says for such a person his organs of interaction with spiritual realities are deadened he cannot understand spiritual things because they are not scientific spiritual things are not scientific spiritual things are not philosophical they are spiritual so your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit must be heightened and activated for it to make sense it does not make sense to drop a prayer request on the ground and dance around it a natural man will tell you that stupidity it does not make sense to write your problems on a prayer request and come and drop it at the altar have a man lay hands and get up smiling it does not make sense to believe something you have not seen and start taking action in advance no the natural man cannot do that in the world they say seeing is believing if i can't see it i shouldn't believe it how in the world do you want somebody whose organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit has not been heightened to believe that someone can stand with a growth a lump a malignant growth cancerous growth and just with a word it disappears no see let me tell you something most people's doubting of god is because the holy spirit has not activated their organs of interaction remember when you used to laugh at praying praying in tongues remember that's what was happening to you you see believers praying and sweating and you say Ay, who lied to these people see you now you are in the same thing happily a forerunner of it how about the bible how about confession to believe that you can communicate things thank you that you can communicate things and then they will come to pass because you opened your mouth and spoke ah, ah. you just sit down in your house and expect a destiny helper to help you who dash monkey banana where will that come from you mean somebody just sits down and comes to bless you all of these things that we teach brothers and sisters are spiritually discerned say after me spiritually discerned why will you ever believe that a man went to the cross for you what if it's a lie was your name on the cross you were not there you were told he went to the cross for you how are you sure it was for you what if he went because he did something wrong and they just created a story to cover up let me tell you how you know the organs your spiritual senses have been activated the things of the spirit no longer become an embarrassment to you you are not ashamed of it some of us still do big manism for spiritual things shout lift your hands and don't fall our hands that's someone whose spiritual senses are deadened does not understand 
you are sick to take the communion what is communion i beg i saw you baking this cake i saw you you even put small wine inside and you are now all of a sudden telling me it's anointed and it can cure please do less less we are and I'm, I'm i'm sorry to say this but even some of us pastors we stand on stage and we bastardize spiritual things we tell people look you you have common sense i mean what is uh, how can you walk around your house in the night prophesying get a police and we laugh over it and make it look as if spiritual things are nonsense if you are not a spiritual man you can't believe that somebody can come with a result that is not working and you lay hands on it and he goes back and check and all of a sudden he finds out it has changed his own cynical people are those who their organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit you saw our mother giving a testimony there are some of you here if journalists will come now you say mama open that leg let's see i don't believe it seeing is believing because many of us believe that an elderly woman at her age like this would come to stand to lie to you cynical about everything i'm showing you the need for the holy spirit in your life this is why you cannot experience speed when they see a young man all of a sudden come you see this gentleman he was he grew up in the village just like you and in one year god has changed his life and changed his level when people see him they say look all these young people it took me 20 years to buy my first car because you are a natural man but this guy has tapped into a supply he knows there is a system in the kingdom are we together now and you look at him and say no job you graduated with third class what are you doing whose head did you cut that you are now buying a car you are even saying you buy a car for your mother how did that happen the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit how can tithing open the heavens for you this thing is just a gimmick oh men of god use this thing they, they eat people's money and you share the next time you can know whether people are alive in the spirit by their conversations their conversations are a window to their spirit man so never argue when you want to argue with people find out what level they are first so you don't make a fool of yourself there are people when they talk the keys just to say all right god bless you it's all right you know i'm telling you all these things you are sitting down saying you are hearing god to marry well I'm, this one now you are seeing we're all seeing this is how your elder sister did now she's 40 years you don't know what the elder sister believed but you know the principles of the word are you hearing what i'm saying is God blessing you? Yes. Spiritual man. God gives you an instruction. You finish building a house. And you carry the house. And go and give the house of God. And say they should turn it into a missionary house. Is that normal? No. You have to be spiritual. Are there spiritual people in this place? So why do you argue about miracles? why do you argue about signs and wonders why do you argue about dreams i call this guy now i give him a word of knowledge and somebody's watching me i'm watching if somebody is telling me something <laughs> is it very easy to act like that say i'm a believer say i am spiritual i am alive to god say it i am alive to god yes the natural man i'm showing you the number one assignment of the holy spirit to take us out of that natural state and that carnal state to become spiritually alive all of a sudden you now know that prayer has power all of a sudden you now know that the word of god can direct the course of a man's life all of a sudden you now agree that if i honor my parents my day will be long all of a sudden you now know that it is possible for someone to insult you yet in spite of the insult you can still say god bless you natural people who fight and tear themselves but a spiritual man hallelujah it's a spiritual man that will see his car burning to ashes and while the car is burning he will go and lock the door and just be dancing 
and they say oh god i think you can't you at least quench it and sell the tire and he said it doesn't make any difference it's just my car is limited but i'm connected to a supply that is infinite i'm not irresponsible i'm only showing the extent of the abundance of the kingdom i represent spiritual man let me tell you how to know you're a spiritual man jesus gave us a test your environment will fight you because they are not used to behaving like that where will the money come from i'm tithing i'm giving god will give me an idea are you are you aware that we are in may and you are saying by december the house will be built please don't be stupid spiritual people if you are here and you find yourself cynical towards spiritual things you are always doubting can god do this it's a sign that you need to cry for your spiritual senses to be activated I remember some years ago someone told me that he doesn't really believe in miracles that he believes that every healing miracle is fake because they have not been able to bring any concrete documentation i told him i said there's no point arguing and i've had the same thing with several preachers around i told him the day the doctors look at you and say sir you have three days to live that day you will believe in miracle for sure you know this one way god helps us to believe him he just steps back and allows us to struggle with what we think can be him in our lives when you see how incapacitated you are outside of the spirit it will make you to embrace him thank you activation of your spiritual senses number two the second ministry of the holy spirit to a believer this is very important is revelation and understanding of scripture the second ministry listen listen scripture does not help you know the holy spirit the holy spirit helps you understand scripture are we together i am a word addict but i'm going to be correcting many things shortly and i pray that you have the grace and the fortitude to receive it because the way many people are taking their path their journey to spiritual progress they are not going to make progress that way revelation and the understanding of scripture the holy spirit himself is called the spirit of revelation the spirit of understanding when you read isaiah 11 right he is called that in fact paul prayed in ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 for this cause i paul bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit give it to us please Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 let's see the prayer of Paul that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory will give unto you the spirit of what wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him it's a spirit it's not just a desire there is a dimension of the Holy Spirit that helps men to both have revelation and understanding of Scripture let me tell you something if the holy spirit look up please lord jesus help me how do i say this now it is the holy spirit that inspired the writing of this remember the last session we discussed that the holy spirit is the author of the bible the bible did not bring the holy spirit the holy spirit authored the bible all scripture right was inspired of the holy ghost holy men wrote as they were moved led by the spirit i hope you know that the apostles never had the privilege to hold this document i hope you know the early church did not go to church with something in their hand called bibles do you know that when they went around they did not hold a little book with 66 books it was their testimony the testimony of the ministry of the holy spirit in their lives that have been documented to help a generation understand the character of God the purpose of scripture is very clear he said ye err not knowing the scripture these scriptures testify of me they don't give you power in themselves the scriptures are a pointer the end of scripture is an encounter with a person a person the spirit of revelation 
Jesus himself told us that when the Holy Spirit came he would grant us access to the understanding of scripture say understanding of scripture there are several people let me tell you something look up please it is dangerous to study this book or any Christian material without the Holy Spirit because you are going to gain an understanding from it but it may not be the understanding that God intends and the terrible thing this is why for many of you who have studied the Bible and studied you know church history you will know that the translation of the Bible was done well but it came with many mistakes um, because many of those who translated the Bible did so sadly from Hebrew Latin Greek Aramaic into English they did not really consult the ministry of the Holy Spirit seriously many of them just consulted archaeological and theological materials and there are some of the modern translations of the Bible we have now are very disturbing very disturbing they are a communication of carnality men attempting to interpret spiritual things in the flesh and so you have all kinds of Bibles they remove several things in the Bible that they, fe they feel are an interruption to civilization. They carefully extract certain verses from the Bible. They add certain things that were not there. Revelation of Scripture. Revelation of Scripture. Revelation of Scripture. I will come back to that, but it's sufficient for you to know that if you ever want revelation the key is to embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit when you study scripture with his ministry activated in your life then you will have understanding then you will have revelation number three the third ministry of the Holy Spirit to the believer this is important let me spend a few minutes here guidance and direction this is one of his major ministries to the believer guidance and direction john 16 verse 13 john 16 verse 13 please give it to us and then isaiah 30 21 john 16 verse 13 guidance and direction everyone say guidance say it again guidance and direction how be it when he not when it when he the spirit of truth is come what will he do he will guide you into how many truth all truth i know many of us don't believe this let me tell you what it means to guide can i use anybody i've been using you okay to direct is to say move when you get there turn left that's direction so you go on your own all i give you for direction is an information and then you go but this is what guidance is hold my hands let's walk together oh be careful jump this be careful move this way this is guidance the bible says the spirit of truth can guide a young man who is confused no father no mother where do i go oh lord and the spirit of god says hold my hands and watch what i will do i will guide you i will guide you okay you will be in zaria for two years guidance after that you plan to go to London. No, it's not London. It's Akwaibo for one year. Oh God, what am I doing there? Just follow me. Guidance. Many people, pastors, leaders have, have ignored the guidance ministry of the Holy Spirit. Attempting to get direction directly from the Bible without him is hypocrisy and religion. Do you know why? Look at me. Look at me. There is nowhere in the Bible here that is written Apostle Joshua Selman by 2011 and 17 you should be in Zaria. It's not written here. The principles of the kingdom I will come there are written but there are times your life requires hands-on customized specific information. This is where he comes in. You see that? The spirit of truth he shall guide you into how many all truth what is all truth does it include ministry does it include your finances please help me does it include your establishment 
why did you leave him in church and you are around trying to look for jobs all by yourself and you never intro you go to submit proposals alone and then we don't pay attention to his ministry i think what is in vogue now is once you are in lagos or abuja about your life will be better and you transport yourself and transport your ignorance to lagos and you're on your own and a city that should bless you punishes you because it's not there with you someone else can be in zamfara led by him what are you doing in zamfara he asked me to come there and he's living like a hero in zamfara please hear me when it comes to guidance you must submit to the leadership of the holy spirit let me show you something isaiah 30 21 isaiah 30 21 read it if you're a christian one to read and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying uh-huh this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the when you turn to the this is the way walk ye in it uh -uh. if you go about it this way it won't work this is it oh i just want to go and do business uh -uh. go and get a master's lord what do i need it for just do it i am directing you uh -huh. he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny prophesy he leads me and guides me to the city of God. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of God. voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark you don't hear his voice if he's far from you he's a gentle spirit the secret to hearing his voice is to walk with him don't keep him far there and say Lord where are you no so close I believe you're holding me now So close, I believe you're holding me now in your arms. I belong, you never let me go. Many fathers did not seek the consent of God, they just got pension two million, just travel to the village. You travel to the village the second day your legs stop working the third day you started walking halfway the building the money disappeared did he lead you you must learn to take responsibility allow his voice guide you see let me tell you something God is not always speaking I know we say God always speaks I don't have a right to question anyone saying that but I've read my Bible and I've walked with the Holy Spirit God does not always speak he speaks read your Bible in the fifth day of the tenth month the word of the Lord came the word of the Lord came like a messenger God sends his word before he senses is with him when he sends it it comes your job is to wait no matter how long waiting is cheaper than paying a price unnecessary God is speaking to someone here because your your head can move you as the voice of God waiting the hardest things for believers Lord you said this year you will prosper me what is this you've not even given me an idea a business idea and God says just be praying just be waiting oh God by now my colleagues have started ministry and all of them even have five five hundred members huh? I look at all of them and it's as if you didn't call me. I got them born again. And God says, just wait. 
if you don't hear his voice die there waiting for him are you hearing what i'm saying i'm giving someone a powerful powerful revelation man of god if he does not speak don't start this tv ministry don't say because you have money not every door that is opened is opened by god you shall hear a voice satan can open doors your force can open doors when you force a door to open there are too many inconsistencies in the life of believers and the reason is because of that stillness stillness the holy spirit does not speak to men under an atmosphere of noise 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 lord there are 12 men around my life tell me quickly which one truly you won't hear anything the holy spirit is a master of solitude silence silence oh god five jobs speak quickly before i choose my own you will hear that kind of thing no. waiting is a sign of faith waiting is Here's your part now. Lift up your eyes to Him, for you will arise again. He will come and save. Listen. Lift up your eyes to Him, you will arise again. He will come and save. Apostle, I was never taught that God can direct people look at how 10 years of my life has become a mess I married wrongly I did all kinds of things I entered into every wrong known business I did every kind of thing wrong friends look at my life lift up your eyes to him for he will you will arise again and he must come to save no regrets is there hope for a tree yes there is even though it be cut up if you can lift up your eyes i just feel in my spirit god is speaking to someone here you are saying can this thing ever work my god my god an expert in changing the lives of men have you not heard of abraham i lift up my eyes to you so I will rise again. You will come and say, Can my church get back again? Yes. You joined all kinds of friends in the name of ministry, preaching all around, and before you knew it, that grace left. But like Samson, like Samson, you will arise again. Okay. You will arise again. For he will come and save you. I speak to your weary heart. Your God will surely come. How long? His time. His time. How long, Apostle? We've been building for 10 years. Our neighbors are finished. Leave your neighbors. He's preparing a table for you. Lift up your eyes to him. And you will arise again. He will come and say, Psalm 23. Please let's hurry up. Our time is gone. Goodness. God is blessing and healing people here. Psalm 23. God is encouraging someone. Stop crying. You can't cry forever. There is hope. There is hope. You can start afresh again. I don't care what happened the Lord by his spirit is my shepherd the sheep does not have horns the sheep cannot fight its security is entirely based on his trust for the leadership of the shepherd two he maketh me everybody say he makes me when he becomes my shepherd when i make up my mind i'm not a small child yes 
but I will follow him sometimes we get too matured for his voice oh God you know I'm not I'm not a child again don't play all these games he makes me to lie down where for him to make me lie down means he knows where it is he searches for it and says son this is green your eyes is seem black but God says just lie down this is green pastures Lord but based on what I was taught when I was in the university this is black and God says me lie down when you lie down all of a sudden it turns to green and people say how did you get it uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. every wise man knows the power of the leadership of the spirit you can't fake his leadership your life will be too ugly to pretend he's the one leading you a sign that is not leading you is perpetual absence of beauty and glory in every area of your life he leads me beside the still waters verse 3 quickly help us media he restores my soul all these are things that happen when he's shepherd he can be your lord you will not benefit from this you can make him your shepherd that if you are leading me lord i will follow i will follow you need to see how i talk with the lord and i tell him lord i'm not going from here brothers and sisters i can tell you how many people have given nice proposals wonderful things for the ministry to do but i know you ask everyone who is close to me if god does not speak i'm not going anywhere if after 30 years god does not speak this is where we remain as a ministry are we together i'm not under pressure to show ministry is growing everything that has happened here is a product of his wisdom the messages that have blessed people around the world it was a simple direction from God do not upload your videos do not sell your audios not at this season put them free online I will cause it to move like an angel to the nations of the earth look what God has done today you see when he speaks to you foolish things can bring powerful results because his voice is upon it He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. For, yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, how you got there is not important. The most important thing is that you are there. The valley of the shadow of death, what happens? I will fear no evil. Why? Is it because I already know what will happen? No, you are with me. Although I'm in the valley, if your voice is still with me, then I'm safe thy rod and thy staff they comfort me five thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies because i am close to you i enjoy the fringe benefit of being anointed with oil and then my cup runs over guidance believers please hear me let's return back to the place where the voice of god becomes the timing of our lives don't allow this scientific living fool you young man you are 30 years by now you should have three cars you should have three cars you should be married you should have um uh, what are some of these things again you should be in i mean i mean you you have a masters in etc etc the voice of god will make you look like a fool for a moment but the beauty and glory that will rise from his voice will shock people and they will say how did you do it I remember when we started out in ministry many people thought we were fools many people thought we were idiots but look at his wisdom look at his grace look at the mighty things that he has done you are here today as a product of his voice who will be in your life because you had well pray one minute lord correct my hearing i am determined to hear you I am determined to hear you lift your voice and say Lord I no longer argue with your voice if you don't speak I'm going nowhere 
there is a way that cement right inside and outside make sure you are talking to the lord there is a way that cement right for a young man but the end thereof are the ways of death there is a way to make money that seems right there is a way to marry that seems right there is a way to get connection that seems right there is a way to do ministry that seems right but the end thereof will leave you with pains and regrets but when he leads you his voice comes with speed his voice comes with direction his voice comes with direction guidance yes very simple song yes that's my response to your leading yes how forever say of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer are you learning something tonight the fourth ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is renewal and transformation write this I want to teach you something powerful and then we pray renewal and transformation renewal and transformation transformation second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 but we all second corinthians 3 verse 18 but we all not we some as many who are interested is is the destiny of everyone but we all with open unveiled face beholding as in a glass the glory of god the glory of god is the holy spirit he's called the glory of the father he says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit is responsible for the transformation of men what is transformation a change of state that is caused about by a change of beliefs a change of values a change of paradigms listen carefully one of the major ministries of the holy ghost in the life of a man is to cause renewal renewal of your mind romans chapter 12 from verse 1 i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto lord which is your reasonable act of worship verse 2 it says and do not be conformed the word confirmed is the word patterned do not be patterned after aeon the the word world there's the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with the age do not allow yourself there is a pathway young people are taking that will land them in failure there is a way people are taking that will cause them to be mediocre in business in ministry whatever it is it says but be what transform how through renewal transformation the process that makes you become like christ experientially is called transformation transformation the bible challenges us to have the mind of christ challenges us to cultivate the mindset philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you the word let is permit allow authorize this mindset this thinking this ideology this is the reason why the ministry of the word is important now let me tell you something about the word of god while i was preparing the holy spirit 
kept drumming in my spirit to correct this i want to correct something now the confusion that has come and has been in the body of christ for a long time as to where the ministry of what we call the word and the ministry of the spirit because it's, it's, it's a thing of confusion for a lot of people now that i'm talking about the holy spirit in transformation many people are saying i, I think it's just the word of god there is a system and this is what i want to teach you listen there is the word of god as a person understand this are we together john 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word there is the word of god as a person say the word of god as a person we know him our dispensation knows him as jesus are we together we call him jesus the bible calls him the word of god revelations 19 13 the man upon the white horse riding had a name his name is the word of god give it to us please revelations 19 yeah i believe verse 13 it should be revelations 19 13 let's look at it and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood what was his name is the word of god his name has always been the word of god so there is the word as a person his name is jesus we know him as jesus jesus is the name that was given to him when he wore a human body angels don't call him jesus in heaven they don't call him jesus that, that's a discussion for another time the only time in, the angel mentioned jesus was simply telling mary his name he shall be called this they don't call him jesus read your bible in heaven they don't call him jesus every time they call him jesus is because they are relating with man so that we are not confused as to whether there are many of them he is the word of god a person but there is the word of god as a testament as scripture as the bible the testifier of the person this is it look up there is the word of god as a person but there is the word of god as scripture a testament jesus said that scriptures testify of him what we call the word of god as scripture is a compendium of the dealings of god with man to the end that we may understand the system of god's kingdom and see here by the help of the holy spirit the character of god in dealing with men to understand his system his person his agenda the word of god as a person the word of god as a testament a written document that speaks about the life the power the realities of heaven now listen to me you are transformed by scripture but only when the breath of the holy spirit is upon it when the holy spirit does not breathe upon this this did not fall from heaven this was published by zondervan or published by any of these people they may not even be born again they just published a book i hope you know that 66 books are the ones that are given to us but there are many extra biblical materials that are still the historical documentation of the apostles are we together now so there is the word of god as a person the christ himself there is the word of god as a testament what we call scripture listen carefully scripture in itself cannot do you anything now this is the problem we embrace scripture yes we call it the word of god yes it is a testament testifying of christ but it should lead you scripture is only useful when the holy spirit is participating in the process of opening it up if you open scripture just by yourself you will be like the scribes the pharisees the sadducees so the unity of scripture and the spirit is what produces the living logos the rema of god it's not just to think that okay because this is the bible many people sit down and then they can look at this this is only as hallowed as the ministry of the holy spirit makes it in your life otherwise this is just an ordinary book an ordinary book that archives the teachings of this man we call jesus the bible in itself cannot do you any good 
it is the ministry of the holy spirit breathing upon the word giving life to it so everything you see in the bible he empowers you to believe it act upon it and delivers the result he is the power behind scripture the holy spirit is the power behind scripture you have to believe this there is a word of god as an information as a testament that reveals the life and the principles of the kingdom listen i've said it but let me say it again these words in themselves only educate you they can't transform you that's why a lot of people do devotional without the holy spirit and at the end of it they finish and they close the devotional many people do bible studies even in church there are many churches that do bible study for decades but there's no transformation in the lives of the people you know why because we're only doing an exegesis on a spiritual document in fact even what we call confession um i wrote something down here i said confession of scripture without the presence and power of the holy spirit is mere psychology confession of scripture without the presence and the power of the holy spirit is mere psychology it's the same thing that happens when you go to a yoga class and they are helping you to be able to train your mind to have some kind of transcendental experiences what gives life to your confession is that the holy spirit is back of it otherwise you are just speaking nonsense we mock ourselves and just speak ah, this and that this and that we jack ourselves and we ignore the ministry of the holy spirit words generally are powerful but they do not bring your desired effect until they are directed by the presence and the power of the holy spirit confession of scripture without the presence and the power of the holy spirit is mere psychology in genesis chapter 1 verse 3 we see that the lord spoke the word but the holy spirit was there before the word was spoken not after not during the holy spirit was there hovering around don't invite him after you have spoken everything you want to do and then you say holy spirit if there's any space for you no transformation part of the ministry of transformation is to produce in you the character of the spirit galatians chapter 5 you read from verse 16 down to 22 but for time's sake let's go to verse 22 galatians 5 22 look at what the bible says but the fruit of the spirit in other words the recreated human spirit that is in alignment with the holy spirit should produce these effects love joy you cannot love except by the spirit you can be emotionally attached to a person or a thing that's a natural thing even animals do it but you need the holy spirit to love agape undeserved love how about joy the bible calls it joy in the holy ghost joy unspeakable and full of glory it says rejoice in the lord always it's impossible to do this it says again i say rejoice a life of joy is a product of his presence when you are ever joyful is a sign that the transforming power of the spirit is at work in you brothers and sisters let me tell you when you see people joyful it's not because everything is working it's just because the spirit of god they have learned to walk with the holy spirit there are people here seated right now as i talk to you they've had bereavements they've not even buried the people but you see them happy they will be the first to hug you and shake you after service excessive sadness dullness is a sign that you are walking in the flesh so when they send you pocket money when you come for koinonia everybody knows that is the end of the month you got something or if your salary lands help me nigerians as soon as your salary lands everybody knows you dance in church and you do everything when you stand with your tie you wave it everybody should see but the moment they don't pay to see everybody say please clap is he not enjoying he should come and face what i'm going through no everybody say i will be ever joyful yes it's a product of the spirit be so joyful that men will be surprised when you tell them what you are going through because they'll say i never knew 
pastor you mean you've been going through this this is what you've been going through for the last three years yes joy unspeakable full of glory don't pull your mouth and frown and you get up in the morning good morning sir. no joy <laughs> Somebody was supposed to give you a job. You even gave testimony in advance and implicated yourself and then the job didn't come. Hi, oh God, is this how you disgrace me? So now I'm, I'm going to come for coin. How will they? Joy. I am ever joyful. I'm a very, very joyful person. It doesn't mean that people do all kinds of nonsense and foolish things around my life all the time, but I'm ever joyful. When I see people who are happy and joyful, they look beautiful they look wonderful regardless of what they are going through joyfulness is not irresponsibility it's a sign of faith that you know things will change why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen that's why when i saw that our mother singing a song and joyful oh dear what a wonderful mother some of you just come here and say look i'm i'm sad uh, we thank god for the miracle what then is the testimony gave me two injections and uh, the needle almost broke but God gave me a miracle and we don't even know you are finished you just say ah, you are finished that's it what then is a miracle laughter do it good like medicine turn to your neighbor and tell him or her laughter do it good look at me prophesy to your neighbor and say please don't carry a load on your head god is not giving you some of us you are 20 years you are looking as if you are 90. what's the problem i'm the one sponsoring myself now what i said which of you by worrying can add are you aware that i have three children we didn't plan for the third one it just came so what School fees is now 50,000. I don't know what is happening in Nigeria. Who is getting the high blood pressure? No. Don't put tension around your life. Say myself, relax. God is in control. Say it myself, relax. God is in control. Let me tell you what the devil will tell you. He said, don't mind this nonsense. Apostle asked what you will eat after this program we 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 know ourselves finish coin only i'm waiting for you listen remember what we spoke about carnally to be carnally minded what does it take god have you not seen people walk to others and say look emeka come god said i should give you 10 naira take go and drink tea with it you don't believe god can do that say i'm not popular in koinonia who is talking of popularity didn't he say god said the all-seeing eye of God that can locate you and bless you. Don't always think people have to bless you with strings attached. Not everybody is a bad person. There are genuine people who can walk to you and say, God just instructed me. They will even allow you to explain it. Who are you, sir? I'm just obeying God. May that happen to you after this service. Please give it to us again we're hurrying up now fruit of the spirit let's find somewhere to tie it up peace 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 are you peaceful boys tell us worried long suffering another word for patience there are too many impatient people listen you have to learn it don't say we are like that in our family we are too impatient you call somebody uncle will you send the money he says call me a little later after 10 he says, uncle it's me again i hope you are not offended of course he's offended 10 minutes there are some of us it's like you know how parkinson's disease is we if 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 we do, there, there is such tension you advise yourself create images and get tense by them you need to have patience lord i thank you I know that the devil wants to confuse me and put pressure in my life now but in the name of jesus i will wait for the promises of god nigerians are too impatient too impatient that's why we destroy ourselves overnight 
the blessings God creates we, we destroy it overnight because of impatience gentleness I don't care what tribe you come from I don't care who trained you I don't care where you were you have to change and trust the Holy Spirit to re-engineer you to become gentle it is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit a believer should be known for gentleness to be gentle doesn't mean to be a clown are we together now you know what we call gra gra hello that's the best way I can you know what we call gra gra you are into everything you want to that kind of life you will sap your energy profitless labor the bible calls it the labor of the fool he says where yet every one of them some of us are not gentle they say we are sharing zobo immediately you come where 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 are we before i scatter this place you are learning a bad attitude you go for weddings they say everybody just walk they are coming you are impatient first you are trying to be gentle later on you say this you know we won't get it you push everybody around you are not reflecting listen listen you are not reflecting the character of one who the minister of the holy spirit is at work in his life this gra gra life has destroyed people say from today prophesy say from today i receive grace from god by his spirit to be notably gentle say to be notably gentle once you find yourself fighting over everything you are not gentle fighting over scholarship fighting over withdrawing money atm fighting over getting fuel fighting over buying kerosene fighting over the battle <laughs> goodness goodness benevolence the ease with which you supply joy and beauty to others is a measure of your goodness it's a character it's a dimension of god's glory goodness a quality of benevolence the ease with which you release things to bless others is a measure of your goodness giving is part of an expression of goodness some of us you see my hand look look at me what is this what is this what did you say I, I'm not getting what you're saying I'm not I'm, I'm not sure I heard what you are saying but anyway I'm the one teaching just follow my hands are you seeing this this is how many of us do tongue talking this is a reflection of our understanding about please keep it there keep it there media about goodness someone can be dying sir of course you are not called to feed the whole world you are not called to you are not jesus but you should be able to make a difference you can sit down with hundred thousand and your roommates are crying for one cup of rice so that they can cook as a room not even as individuals and you just sit down and say kai you know the way this country is you come out quietly listen don't laugh i'm very serious god is working on us this is our year of triumph you must change you smuggle yourself quietly down to pz enter peters eat quietly and close your mouth as if as if nothing happened and return back if nobody has told you the holy spirit is telling you now is very bad now it doesn't mean please let me balance this it doesn't mean you go around inconveniencing people because i said they should be good because there are people whose lives are a perpetual nuisance to everybody you go to people's house go around begging everybody for money telling lies i've had people use over five six different phone numbers to call me as different people looking for money you see that truthfully speaking i'm saying it thank god i'm, I'm speaking and it's, and, and it's on air people are following so let's let's balance it being benevolent it's not that people come and stand and say it's a right apostle say anytime i cry you should answer no learn the principles get financial dominion get the wealthy place find find ways of exiting that realm of suffering don't inconvenience people please hear me if you are here and you are used to going to people's homes and becoming a nuisance to parents workers and responsible people who are making a meaning out of their lives you have to stop it 
you have to stop it don't go to people's homes expecting they must give you money you must go and fetch rice when you go to their house they must give you yam who are you no you don't behave like that learn to release open your hands and you will never be poor you close your hands you cannot even receive it is only when what is in your hands is given some of us are really stingy you are stingy you are greedy and you are selfish you have to change once it's not you consuming it to hell with anybody no you can't be that desperate for things that you are inconsiderate about the feelings of others oh i came to buy 10 bottles of water and sir i'm so thirsty it's just one more i'm sorry oh god will help you and you pack your 10 bottles and go you are very very heartless you cannot even say okay let me keep one for you i came before you i came before you many people will hear what i'm saying and say he's just talking nonsense remember i've taught you when you hear people talking these are the things that make your life excellent goodness let's finish up faith or faithfulness really the rendition there is faithfulness the quality of consistency and stability faithfulness is a name that god is called he's called faithful and true 23 please meekness another word for this is humility another synonym is teachability two words combined meekness is a product of humility and teachability when you bring humility and teachability it produces meekness the capacity to learn the capacity to submit yourself to knowledge and information regardless of what you already know many people are not meek the bible says that we receive with meekness the engrafted word temperance another word is self-control a better word is self-restraint look at me let me teach you something not everything haven't said talked about giving not everything is acceptable there are some things collecting it is collecting your bet throwing away your bet right there are pastors for instance you don't have self-control you step into people's homes you know that this home the higher salary here is twenty thousand, but you see them packaging hundred thousand to give you it's not like it's an instruction from god you are happy you get into a house three bottles of wine chicken and the rest say please is there pepper i i always like pepper you are not a responsible pastor don't act insensitive to people as though you are not aware no say myself, myself. Behave. behave one more time myself, myself. Behave. behave there is a time to collect there is a time to say thank you there is a time to pray on the seed pr pray and sow it back preserve your honor huh there is a time to know that uh -uh, this is not collectible there is a time to restrain your mouth many of us have entered trouble we are still trying to manage today because our mouth were careless you opened your mouth and spoke over an information you were not sure of later you found out it was a lie now you are in trouble do you know you can earn a living just speaking correctly yeah there are wrong things you utter with your mouth about people or to people that can cost you five years are we together now school of ministry yesterday we we're watching fella durotoye in one of our uh, we're on leadership and then we we're watching fella durotoye and he said something uh, okay no no not school of ministry i was actually watching him personally and he said something he said will your life become a key for your children or a padlock there are people you mention them they say you know him leave this office now i was going to help you but god over my dead body leave this office even god man they won't give you there are others they say i would have driven certain people but because of this your mouth if you cannot control your mouth to speak well especially about people if it is not good keep quiet are we together yes you say anything anyhow and you see let me tell you something about life come darling come two of you come watch this do you know that 
I can hate this lady and at the moment me and her are fighting are we together now me and Tosin are not close but simply because two of us hate her we can partner together listen now while I am enjoying the friendship with her to hurt this person I reveal many secrets about me that should not be said and then after the fight is now finished one day two of them will now come and be friends against me and then you say Let, i have a confession that day <laughs> me an apostle it's only god this is the foolishness that many people have chained themselves you chain your eyes your hands your leg you kept yourself in one place when you have a track record of sowing seeds of discord when you have a track record of not being self-controlled many of you revealed certain things and thieves came to rob your house you just went around and said you can't imagine for the first time i saw ten thousand dollars and so one guy is drinking <laughs> minerals close to the shop and listening ten thousand dollars my father brought it new from the bank and the guy is listening say in fact let me tell you something it's just that i'm humble we live in so 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 and the person just calls his friend in the night they kill your father take the money some of us somebody likes you instead of you to keep quiet and pray he has not even said anything the whole world and he just hears and says no 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 i can't i'm not ready for this scatter your 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 breakthrough are you learning something now someone secretly called you and said i know you have two carryovers but i am the lecturer and i'm a fellow believer i'm not talking of um maybe sleeping with you to bribe that's not what i'm talking about just the favor of god and he says oh you come for koinonia i'm also a lecturer okay because of you you had 37 let me see how i can upgrade it for you to 40 but i'm doing it just for you you see a wise person you go and thank god and the next thing you go around saying ha ah, you know this koinonia the lecturers they are very nice so what did you get in the other do you know this man did this and the next thing you hear rumors that something happened between two of you and you are trying to argue telling everybody nothing happened a fool even when he's silent is considered wise please learn this lesson our time is gone we are going to pray but i want you to learn thank you thank you you must know when to say what you must know when to go where you must know when to go where some of you have entered places that they threw you out and you will never enter the again except through favor because you did not understand self-control praise the lord two people are walking two people are walking and all of a sudden another person sorry another person comes you know to talk to maybe me and all of a sudden you just come what are you saying whereas that person is a very great man somewhere you did not know how to respect your boundaries there are some of you you sit down i'm teaching you practical things you are sitting down in somebody's house and a senior executive comes somewhere you don't need to be told to stand up there it's not weakness it's called self-control are we together your parents are discussing destiny issues you just pass and say ah uncle i had you i was passing no I'm teaching you very simple things that can make your life adorable. You don't do that. There are times that somebody can pick a call in your presence. You know that this is too confidential. You can gently, diplomatically just throw somewhere and allow them to have their privacy. They don't have the courage to tell you to leave, but you should have the brain to leave. They will respect you enough. Are you becoming wiser tonight? self-control temperance self-control you are angry your father spoke about something maybe your friends came and lied and your father just called you Dow! just slapped you you are an adult but i will slap you and then later they discovered that you were innocent and you see that you are boiling should i slap this one back should i should i revenge i can't be a fool like this listen that's when we know whether the Holy Spirit is Lord over your life because I'm rounding up with this I've seen believers do foolish things when a believer fights his fellow person 
boxing people because of differences truly the holy spirit is not at work in your life listen i'm not a fool people offend me all the time you cannot imagine but when you sit down and say see i know we are all koinonia members i'm going to show you that what a woman can do a man can do better you now wind your hand punch the person unfortunately that's what many men do to their wives beat the wives and then let her say why did you annoy me you know that i have temper it's, it, you need deliverance there is nobody who has temper that is a quiet issue don't say elijah had temper he was in the old testament john the baptist tried it he died in the new testament there are things you do you will not go scot-free this issue of temper stop it when it's time for us to pray now you are going to pray and say lord i must respect my wife you are in a relationship two weeks into the relationship you fought over, over 10 times what kind of uh, uh, um, love love are, are, are you people doing are we together there are couples as you are joining them by evening wedding night they're already fighting fighting over money fighting over gifts fighting over whose parents brought what some of us parents please let me encourage us let's not sow seeds of discord in our children by planting hatred for others you are in a compound of 10 people you create a team from house four to seven is you are the team house one and two you are the ones fighting against that thing will not profit both of you fire to fire ends both people in ashes say in the name of jesus i receive grace to control myself self-control self-control self-restraint a word spoken in due season knowing what to do knowing what not to do knowing how to not overstep your bounds somebody gives you access and says look enter a shopping mall and shop at my expense <laughs> You just clean your hands and say today is it thank god this is favor this is how some of you have abused privileges somebody gave you his phone to call you have 200 naira in your own phone but you spent 1000 in his own phone that's not wisdom are we together self-control how about wearing people's clothes today the shirt you wear is not your own tomorrow the trouser is not your own next tomorrow i like your watch can i wear it stop it covetousness is part of lack of temperance please believe what i'm saying i know some of you are offended stop it that you see if your eyes see it something drives you i must get it no you will die young if you do it that way oh this lady my level wearing this kind of hair wearing this kind of clothes i must do it you don't have self-control Someone met me one time and said, Apostle, there is, a, there is a kind of suit now. There is a trend that they are doing. I said, I don't know who they are. I wear what I want. I'm, I'm not, I'm not anti-civilization, but nobody puts me under any pressure to say, okay, this is what um, somebody was telling me the other time. He said, now, uh, that, that suit is now pencil, pencil trouser and no socks. I said, what, what the, what, what the, what the heck? If I catch myself... I don't have a problem look 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 go ahead do your stuff i don't i don't have a problem but if i catch myself i didn't say if i catch us if i catch myself <laughs> finally the last ministry of the holy spirit thank you daniel empowerment the last ministry of the holy spirit there are many more but i broke them into these sections because they are relevant for us activation of spiritual senses revelation and understanding guidance and direction renewal and transformation and then empowerment isaiah 61 verse 1 to 4 talks of the ministry of the holy spirit to empower acts chapter 1 verse 8 talks about the ministry of the holy spirit to empower acts chapter 10 verse 38 sorry i'm hurrying up 
talks of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to empower. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the anointing. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the anointing. What is empowerment? Causing God's ability to walk in and through you is called empowerment. Empowerment is causing God's ability to walk in and through you. Mary said in Luke chapter 1 verse 34, speaking with the angel, when the angel came and began to speak to her, oh, this and of glad tidings, you shall have a child, and so on and so forth. She said, how shall these things be? How shall it be? And the angel said, this is how it will happen. The power of the highest will overshadow you. How will this year be a year of triumph for you? The power of the highest will overshadow you. How will all of a sudden, in one month, you step into a dimension that you have never stepped into? The power of the highest overshadow you. The Holy Spirit is still in the business of empowering people. Please listen. The gifts of the Spirit, the fullness of the Spirit, dimensions of the anointing, rivers of His power and His grace. It is still available for the end time church. There is darkness everywhere. There is need to forcefully advance the cause of the kingdom. And it will require empowerment. Everybody say empowerment. If you reject the Holy Spirit, you reject empowerment. You can have a bottle of anointing oil in your house. That's not empowerment. If you reject his ministry, he is the secret behind the empowerment in my life. He is the secret behind the empowerment in this ministry. I am happy. I am very, very proud of him. He's done more things in and through my life that I can ever dream of. I remember years ago when the Lord was telling me I will use you and you will be so mighty. Apparently I knew he was going to do it but I didn't realize the extent. Look what he's done in my life. Look what he's done in your life. Some of you when you came here months, years ago, you were absolutely ordinary people. But look how he's transformed you. The Holy Spirit was given to us by God to help us. He is the helper. He is the comforter. He is the spirit of truth. He is the guide. He is an advocate. He is a standby. He is a strengthener. He is a creator. He is a revealer. He is a preserver. The Holy Spirit. Rise up on your feet, please. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. One more time. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you. I will learn to walk in your ways. For step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of my ways. For step by step, for step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you. Sing it one more time. Oh God, oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. 
there are people here right now who I told you that he has a twofold ministry listen carefully our time is gone ministry number one is to unbelievers there are people here you have been in church for a very long time but you have not embraced the spirit of God as eternal life so way the life of God and you are saying man of God tonight you introduce the Holy Spirit for me in a way and a dimension I never knew that I needed him for salvation I'm tired of the way I've been living my life and I make up my mind that I want to run to Jesus or you are here and at one point you have given your life to Christ truthfully speaking inside outside in any of the overflows online and for some reason you discovered that things have gone haywire your life has just scattered and you are saying man of God if you will ask me to come out I will rush to come out to receive Jesus Christ we have just two three minutes for you so if you are outside I want you to begin to rush to come in now in any of the overflows I'm going to count one to four you are inside this building here and you know that you need Jesus God bless you darling God bless you God bless you sir keep coming koinonia a sacrifice of your club as an offering the Holy Spirit is already convicting men and women the Holy Spirit is already convicting men are you coming he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you please clear the way for them if you are coming i want you to run 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 please double up if you are coming from outside run run quickly please quickly one two three we're counting to five don't be ashamed win that war of destiny it's like calling you to receive an award don't let any friend keep you down make up your mind that tonight is my night for being spiritual do we still have people coming quickly make your way to the front hallelujah I want to appreciate you brothers and sisters for making this noble decision listen the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away you are still coming join them quickly I'm about to lead them to pray when men try to convict you they condemn you no matter how sincere they are it takes only the Holy Spirit he does not condone your state but he changes you you come as you are but you don't remain as you are he's transforming power is able to change you lift your right hand and i want you to say after me seriously and sincerely you are not reciting a poem this is supernatural say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight i receive your life i receive your spirit i declare that from tonight my sins are forgiven the anointing of the Holy Spirit is strong as I'm praying for you I, I feel it I feel that anointing every time I begin to feel it I know that his power is strong say tonight I receive your life I receive forgiveness I receive cleansing I declare that I am a child of God I am saved from today and forever I am for Jesus amen keep your hands lifted father I stretch my hands towards this gentlemen and ladies I thank you for bringing them to the fold they have responded to your call Lord I pray that tonight will be the beginning of great days in their lives in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the power of sin the flesh Satan is broken over your life a new beginning starts for you from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen thank you and congratulations let's appreciate them very quickly let's appreciate them very quickly hallelujah praise the Lord next week please I don't want you to miss next week's meeting it's going to be a very special empowerment meeting um, 
we're going to be rounding up the series holy spirit i'll be teaching you on the ministry of the holy spirit i'll be sharing with you very deep secrets and then it will be a time of very strong intense impartation you're a pastor you have a church you're a business person whatever it is if you like you can come with whatever documents that you have maybe for your business please announce it to as many it's, it's a miracle service on its own please be part of it and i want you to come with your heart expectant and the lord will do us good in jesus name praise the lord lift your hands i bless you in the name of jesus let it be a weekend of encounters for you that which you have learned i supply grace for you to walk in its reality the lord bless you and honor you in jesus name